morning. Happy Holy Trinity Sunday. That's what we're celebrating this week is Trinity Sunday. Usually after Pentecost, we begin what uh, used to be called ordinary time. And no one's ever asked really for ordinary time until 2020. Now we can't wait for it. Lord, send us some ordinary time. Well, it's almost here. But first, this. We have Trinity Sunday. It's not a pandemic. It's not, uh, it's not violence in the streets. But it's a celebration of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The one who creates, the one who gives us grace, the Redeemer, and the one who sustains us with power. We're going to talk about that this Sunday. Um, and I want you to be thinking at home, what does uh, the Trinity mean to you? Also be thinking of how we can move with our hearts during this season, whether we call it ordinary or extraordinary or Trinity. Uh, how we can use our hearts rather than our heads to get us through the challenges that face us every day. Um, I have a couple of announcements. Uh, Jim Horton, you know, uh, passed away last Saturday. We are having his uh, memorial service at Jacksonville Memorial Gardens on Tuesday, uh, this Tuesday at 11 a.m. Uh, you can come and we will hold the service at the chapel and then go to the mausoleum club very close by uh, for the gravesite committal service. Also, you'll see the Lord's Prayer is included in your bulletin uh, twice, uh, but we will be saying it as a part of the communion service. So we're celebrating communion. If you don't already have some elements, uh, a form of bread and a form of juice or wine, uh, so you may celebrate at home, and we will all celebrate together in community. Now we have our opening prayer with Reverend Jesse Higginbotham. This morning, let us go to God in prayer. O Lord our God, open our eyes that we might see, open our ears that we might hear, and open our hearts that we might better know you, that we might learn and grow in our faith together this morning. Christ's name we pray. Amen. Will you join me now in our call to worship printed in your bulletin? God said, let there be light, and there was light. O Lord our God, how majestic is your name. You have set your glory above the heavens. O Lord our God, how majestic is your name. Let us worship God. Will you join me in singing our first hymn, number 138, which you can find in the bulletin that uh, was emailed to you, and also I believe the words will be on the screen for you to follow along. Holy, holy, holy.
children's service. But lately, as we've been doing our live stream, I've begun to think of it as a time for some Christian education, for a lesson for all ages. So you don't have to leave the room if you're an adult. You don't have to cover your ears or not listen. And I hope that you will join in this special time of Christian education during our live stream. So today we're talking about the Trinity. Now, sometimes we might think that the Trinity is a little bit complicated of a idea to really grasp a hold of. But I'm going to try my best to give you a little more simple way of understanding and thinking about it. So there are three people in the Trinity. Trinity means three. In the Trinity we have God, we have the Holy Spirit, and we have Jesus. Now each one of these people is a member of the Trinity, and the Bible tells us each member has their own jobs and, is, and does their own things. God creates. Jesus teaches and saves us. The Holy Spirit inspires us and works in us. And yet we also learn that all three of these people are God. God in a different form. God in a way of having a relationship with us. God working in our lives. So the three of them together are God. And when you put the three of them together, you have what looks like a clover. Three pieces, all in one. This is a really great way to understand the Trinity. All three of these pieces working together are one, like all three pieces of a clover are one. And yet, each is its own individual piece. Now, if you want to know more about this and, you, and you'd like a little bit more information and maybe a little deeper of a study that is for both children and adults, you can check out our website and our Christian education page. At the bottom, so you'll go to the page and, start, and scroll down, you'll see a lesson on the Trinity Sunday, including instructions for how to make this very advanced piece of artwork. You will definitely need instructions to, to figure this out. But there are instructions there, and you can make this yourself or with one of your children or grandchildren or a friend, and you can learn a little bit more about the Trinity, including some scripture and also a reference to the Apostles' Creed where we hear about the Trinity. Um, I hope that you will dive a little deeper with me into this lesson and continue to go back to the website and look for new lessons. Almost every week I'm posting a new lesson for you. Until then... Jake's going to talk more about the Trinity. Um, did you bring props? Uh, I don't have props like that. I have this. This is you can borrow mine. You can okay, borrow this. Thank prop. you. <laughs> At this time, we go to God in confession, and we hear the great assurance that is out there for us. That is simply that God loves us. So as we go to God in confession now, let us join our hearts and minds together in prayer, knowing that God is listening and that we are truly forgiven. Let us pray. Lord God, hear our hearts and our confessions. Hear us as we come to you and confess that we are often complacent. Sometimes we see things going on in the world around us and just decide not to participate. Lord, sometimes we are angry. Sometimes we're angry at the wrong thing, the wrong person. Sometimes we can get aggressive. We can get built up and that anger can boil within us and come out in the wrong way. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us when our complacency and our anger and our aggression aren't directed 
hear the good news, no matter what is going on in the world around us, we go to God in confession and prayer. God hears our confessions, hears our prayers, and forgives us all our sins, no matter what they are, big or small. Hallelujah. Sunday we hear from uh, Genesis, but it's the whole of chapter 1, and I'm just going to summarize it during the uh, message, so we're not going to read all of that and the first four verses of chapter 2. Uh, you can read it on your own, uh, or this past week at Bible study at 5.30 p.m. on Wednesday, you can zoom in, we'll send you the link. Okay, there's the plug for that. So the other passages include Psalm 8. Listen for the word of the Lord to you. From this psalm of praise. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens, out of the mouths of babes and infants. You have founded a bulwark 
because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger out of the mouths of babes and infants, out of the mouths of the gurgling of innocent ones is the bulwark that you establish. Who could do any harm to such as these? When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, all that you have established, what are human beings that you are even mindful of them, mortals that you care for them, and yet, and yet, you have made them a little lower than you yourself, a little lower than God. You have crowned humans with glory and honor. You have crowned all humans with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field. The birds of the air, the fish of the seas, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. Oh, Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. God is good. And then we come to 2 Corinthians, and this is Paul writing his second letter because one was not enough. These are two of the longest letters that he writes in the Corinthians. The 15 chapters of the first letter weren't enough, so he had to send another one. Because things were happening there. People weren't getting along. They were fighting in the streets. But when he finishes up, after he says, I'm going to come there and I'm going to have to set things straight. We're going to have to do it with the legal system. We're going to have to do it with the church judicial system. But it's always to build up and not destroy. After he says that, he says, finally, brothers and sisters... Farewell. This is the close of my letter to you. I ask that you put things in order. Please listen to my appeal. Please learn to agree with one another and live in peace. And the God of love, the God of peace, will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss, even if there is a pandemic going on. Give each other a hug, even if it's from six feet away. All of the saints greet you as well. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Those were the words of Paul. It's not the end of the service yet. But you'll hear something like that at the benediction. Finally, from Matthew, we have what's come to be known as the Great Commission. Jesus' final words, according to Matthew, to his disciples. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But there were some who doubted. And Jesus came and he said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and may the meditation of all our hearts today be pleasing to you. Whatever you do, you do to yourself. That's what Jesus says when he shares what comes to be known as the, uh, the great commandment, as the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But whatever you do to others, you do to yourself. God has given us a creative power just like he has. Maybe not to create whole worlds and solar systems and galaxies and a universe, but to create new things all the time. And it's been said by people like John Steinbeck and others who believed in the rugged individualism that we do it best when we do it alone, but I'm going to tell you that we don't. We do it best when we work together. That's the message of the scripture to us today. We might fall under the veil of this myth of individualism, but it 
it doesn't really work out for us. Steinbeck says that in his book, East of Eden, that he really believes that. God created us in God's image. It says so in Genesis, that passage that you're going to read immediately following worship today, chapter 1 and the first four verses of chapter 2. God says, let us create them in our image. Let us create humans in our image. Who's he talking to? We believe that he's talking to Jesus, who was with him at the beginning of creation. We know the Spirit was there because it says the Spirit hovered over the waters at creation. So God is speaking to this powerful, sustaining Spirit, and he's also speaking to Christ, who is the Word, who was there at the beginning. We know that from John. And we do the same thing. We create things in our image. Look at automobiles, for example. You're going to say, Jake, they got four tires. They don't have two tires, like a motorcycle. They don't have two legs. What do you mean we create in our image? My son Joe and I were talking about this not too long ago. I asked him, why do we have to have two headlights? Wouldn't one big one do really good? He said, well, you've got to have two headlights so you can see more stuff. I said, why don't we have three headlights on the car? He said, well, you, three, that's one too many. And he got to thinking about it, and he said, also design experts have said that when people look at a car with one headlight, they don't trust it. There's something wrong with it because it's, really, it's not really in our image. So we have those two headlights. We have the beams of the soul, the lights of the soul of our automobiles. Well, yeah, if you've ever had an automobile that you really, really loved, we create things in our image. God creates things in God's image. And God has created you, and God has created me. God has created everyone in Minneapolis and Washington, D.C., and Chicago, and everybody in Europe and Africa and Asia. All, let us create all of humankind in our image. And then what do we do? I wonder if God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit have debates sometimes because that's what we do and we're created in God's image, right? We can call them debates. That's a nice word for it. But we find ourselves at a time of much dissension. We've been cooped up for a long time because of this COVID-19 business and, and now we find that the lid is just kind of starting to wobble. It's starting to boil off of this, this kettle. But what's happening is creation doesn't come easily. We know this from the pangs of birth, right? But a great thing is being birthed. And I'm saying that I am claiming that what is being birthed among us is unity, and it's the same unity that exists between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this is why we celebrate Trinity Sunday, so that we remember that God, even God's self, exists in the unity of the three. It's not even the holy couple. It's not just the Father and the Son. It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's the creator, the redeemer, and the sustainer. All three are necessary, and we don't survive as individuals. We need one another. And in relationship, it's not always easy, and it's not always clean and neat and tidy, but we learn and we grow. That's what happens in relationships. I was thinking of Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla. And how we thought they each had this great idea. But even they work together. Even when there's competition, whether it's Tesla and Edison or Gates and Jobs, or even when there's competition, especially, we sharpen one another. And we become better at this creative process. Tesla and Edison were actually friends, we find out. And they didn't always agree on everything. One of them thought direct current would help, and one of them thought alternating current was the right system to use. And I'm not going to say who got it right or which one we used, but Tesla was right. And But you can't go to Fort Myers and see his house like you can Edison's. So, you know, there's these. Did you know, while I'm on this, 
Nikola Tesla shook the poop out of Mark Twain one time. He said, what are you talking about, Pastor? We shouldn't talk about such things in church. But it was known that Mark Twain had digestive issues, and so he was friends with Nikola Tesla, and Nikola Tesla had in his lab this thing called the earthquake machine. It was an oscillating piston. It was huge, and it would shake because they were trying to check uh, how much electricity, how much power is lost due to friction in our internal combustion engines. And so he let Mark Twain stand on a platform above the giant piston. And apparently after 90 seconds, he had to make his way quickly to the facilities, working together, working as one. We can achieve all things that are necessary. And I'm not being profane, for all of these things are necessary. How are you overcoming your own cherished opinions today to listen to others? That's how we're going to overcome it. God said we will create them in our image, and there was a community there to listen and to say, yes, yes, God, let's do that. How are you and I doing that today? How are we listening to those who have been long silenced in many ways? And how are we learning from one another how to create a better world, how to create a world of true community just as God exists in community? Where there is competition, how are we working together there as well? Where there is political divides, well, forget about that. We don't listen to one another at all. I'm serious about this. Set aside our cherished opinions. It's an ancient Buddhist philosophy, but it's also an ancient Christian philosophy. We have to overcome our own preconceived notions so that we can move forward as a people. What are your cherished opinions? I'm not talking about the things you feel in your heart. In fact, that's the problem. I'm talking about these ideas that we get in our head about who's in and who's out. And whenever we start thinking along those lines, we become victims of the true original sin, which is exclusivism. There is no exclusion. There is no Jew. There is no Greek. There is no slave. There is no free in Christ Jesus. For we are all one. And Jesus said, you are not alone. So if you're feeling alone in this pandemic time, because I have to give that good news of wholeness and of inclusion for each and every one of us too. You are not alone. I am with you always to the end of the age. That's Christ's promise to us. May you know today by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and through that creative, cooperative love of God, that you are one with all creation. Amen. This time we'll have our pastoral prayer. Um, as I noted at the beginning of the service, we will not say the Lord's Prayer this, uh, during this part of the service, but it will be when we do the communion service. So let us pray together. Almighty God, you have made us in your image. We embrace your image within us. We embrace your image in our neighbor. God, we let go of our cherished opinions so that we can be a part of your holy work in the world and your building of community among all people. Not just individuals, not just cities and states, but between all nations everywhere. God, we pray for the church today. Let us be faithful witnesses to the risen Lord, making disciples, baptizing and teaching, and obeying everything Christ has commanded. God, we pray 
for the earth today. Teach us to be good stewards of your creation, caring for the earth that you made and that you have given to us so that all creatures may be fruitful and flourish. Oh God, we pray for every nation, every person in every nation today. Extend your reign of peace, your reign of wholeness throughout the earth. Fill the strong with compassion and humility and crown the weak with honor and dignity. God, we pray for our community today. Help us to remember that you are indeed with us always. Let those who worship sense your presence and those who doubt be strengthened in faith. Almighty God, we pray for loved ones today. By the holy kiss of your grace and your peace, we ask that you would heal the sick, comfort those who suffer, welcome strangers, and reconcile enemies. Almighty God, we pray for the violence that is in our land, not just looting and things that have been done the last few days, but for the hatred of one group against another, for the exclusion that has led to these, this, this current time of turmoil. We're grateful for those who have protested peacefully and for those who have enforced the law peacefully. Almighty God, we pray for Ellen Gray, who is having an, who may be having an amputation due to a bone infection. We pray for Debbie Horacek, who is in the hospital. God, we pray for Al Sanders, who's having eye surgery tomorrow. We pray for Sally Covington, Lord. We pray for Mike McKinney, a friend of Karen Tidball's, who has pancreatic cancer. God, we pray for Sandy Neeson's husband, who has a, a back infection. God, we pray for Bill Harrell, who is in rehab after his hip is broken. We pray that you would help him to continue healing quickly. And we pray for Don Hartjohn and Arlen Wilkins, who were both in the hospital this past week. We also pray for Sarah Sullivan and Steve as they recover from a hospitalization and a motorcycle accident a few weeks ago. God, there are others on our hearts that we raise to you now in silent prayer. Oh Lord, we ask that in your mercy you would hear our prayers today. In the spirit we pray to you, O oh God confident that all things work together for good for those who love you and are called according to your purpose. God, above all, we give thanks that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus who promised us that he is with us always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Our hymn of response is number 455. Please sing the words and sing loud if you would. <laughs> Stop. 
happier are all who find their refuge, their home, their dwelling place in God. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Eternal God, our hearts are open to you, our desire is known to you, and there is nothing we can hide from you. Help us now to receive this sacrament in faith, and hear us as we celebrate being your creatures. Express our gratitude for these your gifts of love and praise, your holiness in these works. So then, following our Lord's example and remembering his words to us, we take the bread as, as he did so long ago, and he broke it. And he said, this is my life. It's given for you. In a similar way, after they had eaten, he took a cup, and he took a pitcher full of wine, and he poured the wine into the cup, and he said, this cup is the cup of God's covenant of love with you. Whenever you drink from it, do so remembering me. Whenever we gather around table, together in the same space or virtually in the same space, Christ is with us. And we do this, we eat together remembering Christ and his work that he did for us. Friends, let us pray. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you take away the sin of the world. Through Jesus Christ, you set us free to live life abundant. Through Jesus Christ, you reveal to us your love. Bless our communion with one another. Take and eat. This is the life of Christ. This is the blood of Christ shed for us. Let us eat and drink and celebrate together.
The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ is with all of us. Let us pray. You have given yourself to us, Lord. Now we give, now we give ourselves to others. Your love has made us a new people. A people of love, we will serve you with joy. Your glory has filled our hearts. Help, Help us, us glorify Lord. you in all things. Amen. Amen. And now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the power to overcome our own opinions and the power to be the church in the world of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Oh, oh.